I also wanted to ask you about what writers get wrong with sword fights in books. Because, okay. um, because yeah. I've had somebody on talking about um, what the people get wrong with guns. So um, okay. it will be, you know, because there's a lot of people who are writing, you know, swords and, fa- you know, fantasy books with swords. Sure. It's so popular now. Yeah. Um, I haven't done any sword fighting in my um, thrillers, but maybe I will. So um, if you do, please let me. <laughs> I will be sending yeah. it to I'll, you. I'll be happy to give you the feedback. <laughs> I would love that. I'm going to have to write a sword scene now specifically to send to you but tell us um what are the main things that authors get wrong with fight scenes okay um perhaps the biggest obvious most obvious one is they make swords do things that swords can't do um so for example um there's a a certain kind of idea of how armored combat works where you're all in armor and somebody swings a sword at your head and it cuts through your helmet and you die okay helmets are expensive and people will pay the money for them because they work. Now, sure, it is possible to get through a helmet with something that is a sword or a sword-like object, but generally speaking, armor works. So there's the the big obvious one. And you see it on the screen as much as you see it um, in books. Also, um, swords are not heavy. So the biggest sword I have is up to about my nose. It has a cross guard about this wide. And for those who are not looking at the video, I'm holding my hands about shoulder width apart. The thing is gigantic, right? It weighs three kilos and I can swing it around with one hand. Wow. Just sh- right. sh- show us the sword that's next to you as well. Oh, right. Well, this, this, is, this is just a long sword. Um, and it, if I put it on the ground, it comes up to about my sternum, which you can't see on the video. Um, and it is, Ooh. Ooh, it's yeah, a, it's a beast. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. And this, this delightful, lovely thing, as you can see, I'm manipulating it with my fingers oh, because it yeah, weighs about... Wow. It weighs about 1.3 kilos. Oh, goodness. Right? Yeah. So, How much does that cost? Um, it really depends. My cheapest sword was somewhere around 250 quid. And I won't tell you how much the most expensive one costs because my, my, my wife might, might listen to this. <laughs> no, fair enough. I mean, that was a beautiful object for people who can't see it. Yeah, but- that, that one was about 400 euros, 350 quid. But, but what you just told me there, I didn't know. I thought swords were heavy. So right. uh, what, what are the other things people get wrong? Um, okay. To my mind, the thing that um, most bugs me about most historical combat um, that's put into books is that it's boring. <laughs> right? Because the, the, the thing is, you read a book for the characters and the plot. Okay? And the action is there because it's exciting, but also because it's, the reason it's exciting is because your character who you care about is in danger, right? That's why it works. Um, and so when a fight goes on for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages, and nobody seems to be in any real danger, and you kind of go, oh, for God's sake, just stab him already. You know, get on with it. <laughs> um, and so I guess the, the biggest thing is forgetting, getting swept away in the action and forgetting character and plot. That's the, the key thing. Mm. Um, so it bugs me the most. Yeah, which is actually the same with any kind of fight scene. And Absolutely. I imagine, I mean, you know, the MMA guy was like, all these trading blows that you see, yeah. it just doesn't happen, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, most most people, um, if they're not trained for it, you give them one solid punch in the head, they will probably go down. Yeah, and with the sword, you wouldn't stand much chance, like you said. I mean, no. you know. It's a labor-saving device. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is hilarious. So I, I've got to ask you, um, Game of Thrones, which I love. I, I mean, okay. I'm a super fan of Game of Thrones. All right. um, are they? Oh, oh dear, he's holding his hand in his hands now. We can go there. Okay. <laughs> we can go there. No, I just right. want to know, like, how realistic is, is like the sword fighting in Game of Thrones? Okay. I like Game of Thrones, the TV show. I didn't much care for the books. I read the first one. Everybody I liked died at the end. Thought I can't bother with the second one because the characters I was following were no longer there. Yeah. Okay. Um, my wife and I both enjoy the Game of Thrones thing, um, and you know, particularly the dragons and all that kind of stuff. All the really kind of fantasy Gumby elements. Um, the sword fight I remember best was when Ned Stark was captured. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in right. a ring, and the men were surrounding them. Yeah, yeah, and it was just so bad. <laughs> It was just, okay, this man has clearly, I mean, this is Sean Bean, right? He has, he was on Lord of the Rings. He's got superpowers. He carried a sword for like four years. He was sharp. He carried a sword for like the 10 years that that TV series ran. I mean, the man has probably spent as much time with the sword as I have, right? And they made him do things, and maybe he's never trained with it, but he's carried one for an awful long time. 
and the stuff it 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 was just yeah so now what happens when there's a sword fight in in game of thrones or any other thing i tend to shut my eyes and wait till it's over <laughs> just because so it doesn't ruin things so because it's, because it's the it's too theatrical as you say it's a performance it's not real fighting yeah and it's it's not even really good performance because this person is supposed to be an expert fighter and he's fighting like like a child um you know and it, it's just not how an expert fighter would ever behave um the same is true of absolutely any specialist discipline so you know if i'm watching a film about hackers and the person I'm watching it with happens to be a computer expert. They go, oh God, no. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. I what mean, you it's mean. true for every single, yeah. every single specialist discipline. So it's not like Game of Thrones are particularly bad in this respect. And there are some good sword fights out there. Like, um, like what? Give us an example of a good sword fight in a you know film or TV. Okay, The Duelists. Is that a film? Um, yeah, directed by I think it was Ridley Scott a long, long time ago. It's got Harvey Keitel in it. Um, and the first fight is between a cavalry officer and a civilian. The cavalry officer is a trained killer who's never used a small sword before, which is kind of the courtly straight light thing they used in the um, 17th, 18th centuries. Um, and his opponent is a, um, an untrained person who is terrified. And the fight goes exactly the way that would happen. So it's quite quick. <laughs> it is relatively quick, not completely quick because the guy's using an unfamiliar weapon. Also, they do this fantastic sabre duel, um, uh, two cavalry officers having a sabre duel, and they're both, by the end of it, completely exhausted and streaming blood and whatever it is. Brilliant. So the, I also, the I love the, mm. Yeah. I also love the film, uh, the, I didn't like the film very much, but the fight at the end of uh, Rob Roy, mm. Liam Neeson's Rob Roy, really good. Okay. Uh, you have a, a, a fop with a rapier and a thug with a broadsword, and it was just... Yeah, it was great because the characters were there. Mm. The the way they fought really represented their their characters. Mm. Are there any uh, anything you can think of with with women? Oh, that's a hard question. Like a third of my students are women, and I'm doing whatever I can to persuade people that actually, you know, women are just as good at sword fighting as as men because it's not about being bigger or stronger or any of that sort of mm. stuff. The problem is though, in any fight, size and strength do actually matter. Yes, of course. So, yeah, so if you have two people of equal training, the bigger, stronger mm. person will usually be the smaller, weaker one. Mm. But if you have somebody with not very much training and someone with lots of training, then the person with the training advantage can be smaller and weaker and still mm. defeat the other. Um, I want to go and do a sword fighting lesson now. I'm going to put it on my good. list. Yeah. Do. Yeah, come to the house. <laughs> I've shot guns. Uh, you know, I should try Excellent. a sword. <laughs> yeah, why not?